Hey Earth Science, Mr. Estes here. You thought we were remote before? I've taken you all the way up into space so we can look down at our beautiful infected planet. Well, I'm going to take you down to a particular place because this all ties into chapter 15, section 2 and 3 stuff having to do with river systems. So if you'll just um, follow me here. Turns out that I was not able to get Google Earth to work on my computer, um, my work computer, that is. I'm actually using Google Maps, and I selected the satellite option. So you might recognize this. There's Pennsylvania, home sweet home. And um, there's the states around. We're actually going to visit a state directly south of Pennsylvania. We're going to go to Maryland for a second because there is a river that runs through Pennsylvania, but we need to go to the end. So that's why we're going to visit a little town in Maryland called Haver de Grace. So if you're having trouble finding this from, like, you know, close by ground level, uh, you just search for Haver de Grace. It's got this weird spelling, Haver de Grace. Anyway, so this is where the Susquehanna River runs into the Chesapeake Bay. The Chesapeake Bay, as you can see, is just a little neck of the Atlantic Ocean that um, is stuck in here between um, Maryland and uh, Delaware and Virginia. And if I just uh, zoom back in here real quick, it goes up quite far, actually. Now, the picture quality here isn't that awesome because, see, this line isn't like actually some line in the water. That's that's where a couple different satellite pictures were stitched together. But even in this picture, you can see this kind of like ghostly smear um, coming out of the mouth of that river. So that's a whole bunch of sediment that's being deposited by the river at the mouth of it where it enters the bay because the river channel is narrow and the bay is wide, which means that the water velocity drops and load that was suspended is now not suspended. And if you paid attention to the lesson, then you should know that's called a delta. So um, it's not exactly the Mississippi or the Nile, but there is a delta in the Chesapeake Bay from the Susquehanna River. So there's a lot to do with rivers that um, we're gonna look for um, and we're just going to start by following the river. So um, I'm going to get to a, a nice zoom where there's uh, some detail visible. And uh, let's go. So just going to follow the river for a short time before I stop and show you something. We're going to do some river sightseeing. So this right here, let me zoom in on it. So um, just... Geographically speaking, real quick, um, this is um, U.S. Route 1. It's a very long highway. It goes from New York all the way down to Florida. And um, right here um, in Maryland, it just happens to cross the Susquehanna River. And um, I want you to notice a difference between the water on, um, on the left side and on the right side of this road. Do you notice how much, like, darker this water seems and how on this side there's a lot more land exposed there's some you know rocks and dirt even what looks like an island here so uh, why do you think that is turns out that this is not just a highway uh, let me zoom in on this a bit more and uh, you should be able to see what this is oh, hold on <laughs> North America uh, that's not just a road that is a dam that is a uh, power station that generates um, hydroelectric power. And uh, you can tell that's a dam, one, because, well, I mean, you're looking at the wall of it right there. And also, here's a bunch of turbulence. That's the result of the outlet, you know, the water being passed through the dam. Um, you may also notice this junk that's... Um, <laughs> trapped on the upstream side and um, also let me see if I can uh, get a good view of it uh, 
uh, here we go. How much narrower the channel is on this side. It's because um, the dam inhibits the river flow and it causes the river level to rise over here because the water isn't able to pass through quickly enough in order for this to drain to a lower level. So if you remember, part of um, flood management has to do with the damming of rivers. Um, if there was an inordinate amount of rainfall that was draining through here, you could prevent flooding here by letting water through the dam faster. Unfortunately, that would well, cause the water levels over here to rise. So no matter what choice you make, um, this dam allows you to have some control over the water levels on either side. Anyway, there. Um, this is a long river. There's going to be more dams on it, and I want you to keep an eye out for them. I'm not going to point them out to you. However, I am going to zoom out so I can um, move a little faster. Once again, these weird lines, that's just the result of pictures being stitched together. Don't let it weird you out. All right. So just going to follow the river for some distance. And I'm going to pause for a second right here because we've uh, gotten up to our own latitude. Uh, so this is 462 um, in York. That would be uh, Market Street. And this is Route 30. You probably know Route 30, even if you just know it by Arsenal Road. So we're up here, you know, in our neck of the woods. That's such a dumb expression, our neck of the woods. Anyway, so... Um, uh, if you do come over to Lancaster County, I invite you to try the Tricky Hill experience. Um, look, 4.4 stars. It's not bad. Okay, anyway, let's uh, <laughs> let's move on. So um, following the Susquehanna River, I want to stop at a place that um, might have something, uh, something to teach you about rivers. So if I come down here real quick... I've got some islands that the river seems to cut through. Now, we know that this is one large river. However, if you were to zoom in right here, it might actually look like several runner, uh, several rivers all running in the same place. Now, if you look back in the, um, the lesson that covered um, different uh, kinds of streams, one of them was a braided stream. Now, this right here is not technically a braided stream. However, this kind of illustrates the idea that it's difficult to identify a single channel because there's so much, um, say, sediment that stands to divide parts of the channel from itself, or it, um, there are several kind of interwoven or overlapping stream channels that flow past the same soil. Um, it's not like some bizarre kind of river that only occurs in faraway places. It's just where there's enough of, there's enough soil in the, the stream channel to kind of obscure a single, um, a single course for the river to go. Hold on just a second. What is, Gut Road. Nice, Pennsylvania. Nice. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's move on. So um, there is something else here that's worth pausing to see. Take a look at that. Can you tell from this picture which direction the water is flowing? So um, we have here a small stream that is flowing into a larger stream. You should recognize that um, as a vocabulary term. That's a tributary. And just by looking at this from above, you should be able to tell what direction the water is flowing. So if you, I mean, even if you're just following the Susquehanna River, you know that the water in the Susquehanna flows that way, which means that this water flowing into the Susquehanna would have to kind of turn right, 
can you see this huge mass of stuff here? That is all being washed out into the river by that tributary. And it almost kind of looks like if you tilt your head, like this could be a smokestack and this is a big cloud of smoke billowing out in the wind that's blowing that way. There will be more of these along the river and you can tell what direction the water is flowing uh, from that. Okay, so we've got a lot more ground to cover, river to cover. I don't, I don't know what, we have a lot further to go. So um, Susquehanna River, moving on, there's gonna um, be spots where it's a little wider, spots where there's lots of branches, islands, some larger, some smaller. But we got a way to go. Hey, it's Harrisburg. Hi, Harrisburg. Okay, so we're at another good place to stop because we've got two rivers here. On the left, you've got the Juniata River, and on the right, you've got the Susquehanna River. Two rivers. All right, let's head back down. One river. They meet right here. So once again, technically speaking, the Juniata River is a tributary to the Susquehanna River. Now, um, if we were so inclined, we could just say goodbye to the Susquehanna River and follow the Juniata River instead. We're not gonna do that though. We are team Susquehanna, so smell you later, Juniata. But that's actually only gonna get us so far because Here it is, two Susquehanna rivers. So on this side, West Branch, Susquehanna River. And on this side, Susquehanna River. So when it comes to identifying where the Susquehanna River is, you run into a lot of problems because it's constantly fed by tributaries. Now, the Juniata River is apparently large enough to qualify as its own river for some time until it eventually joins the larger river, the Susquehanna, and then it's just kind of subsumed by it. At this point, we have two rivers that are apparently approximately the same size, which means which one's the main river? It's really... Uh, impossible to say. So um, we've got the West Branch Susquehanna River and then the Susquehanna River, which I guess we would call it the East Branch. So here is where I'm going to stop and uh, where you will begin. Um, I'm going to have the F block, the F block class follow the West Branch Susquehanna River. And I'm going to have the G block follow the East Branch, the one that's just labeled the Susquehanna River. Now, what I would like you to do is two things. One, I'm going to have something of a scavenger hunt for you. That is, I'm going to find some locations along the river that I want you to be able to locate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screenshot of a location. It's gonna be up to you to find that along the river and then basically just identify it with where it is. 
Um, there should be like a town nearby um, that uh, you can use to identify it by. Um, and that is the first thing. The second thing is um, I'd like you to look for something interesting for you to take a screenshot of it and then send that to me so I can um, compile that into a uh, look what I found kind of list. Um, look for things that are, you know, really unusual or really freaky or confusing. Uh, maybe you'll find something um, that you think is really cool, uh, but, you know, I guess that's really up to you. Um, I would just say this. Whenever you meet a place where the river branches, always follow the larger branch, okay? So if you've got, like, a river splitting off and it goes like that, go this way, okay? Um Situations where it appears to be even, um, I mean, I don't know, flip a coin or something, but uh, that is going to be what you're going to do uh, for the next two days. I'm saying um, two days because this um, can take kind of a long time depending on how much you um, you want to invest in it. Uh, there's an awful lot to look at. Um, I did follow this river once um, for hundreds of miles on Google Earth, and I ended up in New York. So um, actually, New York, then back down to Pennsylvania, then back up to New York. So um, yeah, that's what we've got. Um, you should spend at least half an hour on this just because um, that's how long it's going to take to cover any kind of appreciable distance. Anyway, uh, this has been Earth Science. I have been Mr. Estes, and um, you have been at home.